Greetings again. In this video, we are going to talk about um, the skills involved in using columns in Revit 2020 uh, to help you with your certification exam. So let's get to it. Um, on, I'm going to start here on the Architecture tab, and I'm going to come down. I'm going to click on this drop-down menu right below the column tool and you'll see that we have two different columns we have architectural and we have structural um, depending on which one you choose now architectural is going to be something more uh, aesthetically uh, appealing than the actual structural columns structural columns are more or less for you know really you know in-depth structural needs uh, commercial buildings typically um, and now when you choose from here if you choose architectural column uh, and this is kind of weird the way it works, but the architectural column will be above the ground where you would expect a column to be. But if you click on structural column, it'll automatically place it below ground. But we'll get to that in just a few moments. Let's go ahead and start with architectural column. And as you see, it gives me a default column, which is a rectangular column, 24 by 24. Uh, if I click on the type selector, I get other choices. I can go down to 18 by 24 or 18 by 18. Uh, typically, these size columns would be concrete. Um, I'm sure they, they could be steel as well, but these are just solid square columns. Um, and placing these columns is pretty simple. Let's get out of the type selector. Okay, and um, what we use these column grids for, uh, of course, is to sort of aim and place our columns right on the intersection of those uh, column grids. Now, if you do not have this file from where we first started and we created column grids, go ahead and pause the video and create one that looks similar to this. Um, and it doesn't have to look, doesn't even have to have walls. As long as it has a few co column grids on it going in each direction, you'll be fine. And then once you do that, just start the video back up right here and we will continue on. So placing this column, we would just uh, go right to the bullseye right there, right where the two columns or the two column grids come together. Uh, of course, this is an unusual, I'm um, just kind of placing them. This isn't really how you would do it on an actual structure because you'd probably place the columns first and then go back and place the exterior envelope around those columns. But as you see, every time I click to place one of these columns, it uh, actually consumes the other geometry around it, which is a good thing. Okay, so it basically becomes part of the wall. All right, <clears throat> so that is, well, that type of column. Uh, you can actually use different types of columns. There's two ways to do that. You can go to Load Family. And because we are using an architectural column, we have to go up here to this column folder. Okay, there's two column folders. This is one of them. And this is going to give you your basic, uh, really residential. Um, uh, now, that's just a wood timber column. This is a round column rectangular column, which is the one that we're using, a metal clad column. You can start to see where we're starting to get, uh, you know, some of these are more aesthetically appealing, more, uh, you know, Roman type columns. There's a Doric and here's a chamfered where it's chamfered on the edges. Okay. So those are the column choices that we have. We can also go to edit type and we can do all types of editing to these. We can click on duplicate and we can change the size. Uh, we can even change the top and the base offset so that everything goes where it needs to go uh, so that it uh, the base sits on top of the, the concrete patio instead of uh, underneath it. And so the, um, the top uh, offset doesn't go through the roof. It uh, actually kind of comes under Oops, sorry, there was a fly bug, bug me, buzzing me there. Um, but uh, it places it right uh, up under the soffit of, say, an overhang or something like that. Uh, and, of course, you know, you would change your material right here. This one currently says concrete cast in place gray. Uh, typically, it just comes as no material at all. It comes as a, a default nothing, okay? Uh, so you would typically have to change that to whatever material that you wanted. All right, so that's it for those types of columns. Um, another type of column is under the Structure tab. Okay, um, and here, if you click on Column, it automatically pulls up the structural columns. Now, remember, like I said before, that structural columns, uh, it, like, will place them underground. Come on up here and look. 
And if you look in the uh, options bar, it says depth right here. So depth unconnected at nine feet. So it is going to place it under the ground and it's going to place it from zero to nine feet. Uh, however, I can change that to height and it will place the column above ground, which is where you typically want this particular column anyway. And same thing, you just place these columns right um, right there between where or right there where the uh, grid lines cross. I'll go ahead and put a couple out here as well. Okay, so that is your structural column. Um, again, you can do the edit type here. You have a lot more options. And here, this this information here is, is, is that your engineer would have to give you this information. Now, this column is preloaded into the system. If uh, you need something a little bit different, you just have to look at your engineering data and set this information up according to that engineering data. Hitting duplicate, of course, um, you don't want to overwrite the original column. Uh, but you can also do this. You can go to load, and this works just like, um, you know, when you do it from that folder back here load family right there same exact thing as a matter of fact both of them are going to give you the same exact information but just to show you that there is another option to get there you can click on load and you can see we're in all of the uh, commercial type columns at the moment and we can choose whatever size or whatever type of column that we need okay so here's a WRF welded reduced flange column and if we'll click open then we get a table with all kinds of other sizes of these columns um, on it and uh, again this is some information that you would get from the engineer on the project uh, whoever's going to be specifying those columns for your company or for you okay but we can just choose anything we we'll click OK and then click OK again and we're now placing that column as you can see it's much wider okay all right so those are is how you do columns pretty simple um, and to look kind of see what it is we've done there you go there's all those columns just kind of sitting in space here and there there's those concrete columns that we placed earlier okay so uh, you know there you go uh, that's how you do columns in Revit. And good luck. If you have any questions, please leave a message below.